Hi guys, this is another episode of my hangar reviews. This time I have a nice little toy-like drone. Gonna find out with you if it's a toy or if it can be taken serious. Uh, how will the footage be? It has a 14 megapixel fisheye lens and this lens is pointed downwards a bit, you see. But the fisheye means it, it takes really a, a big a big wide angle uh, shot of the surrounding and there's a powerful uh, dual core processor uh, in this quad that computes a straight full HD frame out of the fisheye and this simulates a brushless gimbal. Uh, of course the software stabilization has some speed advantages but also I think some quality disadvantages but we will see how, how it really looks. The, the, the best thing about the software gimbal of course it, it has uh, almost no weight. It just has the extra weight of a powerful processor but um, you don't have mechanics uh, or motors that, that are heavy. You have 393 grams it's really lightweight. At least in Austria this can be flown under the toy regulations as long as you don't fly higher than 30 meters or around 25 meters that has something to do with uh, maximum allowed uh, impact force of 79 joule. But however you can set uh, a height limit in the software and fly uh, legally uh, within the regulations. Yeah. We, have, uh, we have four brushless motors self-securing fast locking prop nut thingies okay so it's really fast and easy to mount uh, you take this thing with you then it's even easier and you have it very compact if you don't uh, attach the props so you can really throw it in your backpack and that's surely that's the, the biggest point of the bebop uh, you can take it anywhere and the easiest device to steer it would be a smartphone uh, where I found the Android based uh, app works better or is more current than the iPhone iPad app but that may change so at the moment the uh, Android way is preferred by me so you can't really beat this this portability if you're going for a trip or if you want to hike and take a, a little shot from the air it's really yeah it, it's so small unbelievable uh, the battery this locking adapter it's a bit fiddly maybe but it's really okay and this is the battery 1200 milliamp 3 cell and you do charge it with this supplied charger just slide it in this way and wall plug it uh, what could be easier charging really nice takes about an hour maybe didn't measure it okay so what are the other features it's the lower body is the dirty section as it's called with vibrations and it's separated with these uh, really common rubber things down there and this thing even has an built-in cooling fan because the processor has so much power I suppose. Now you hear the built-in fan and as I said the easiest thing would be the smartphone to use. Gonna use Bebop and gonna connect and as soon as I'm connected I Check the free flight app, which is I'm connected to the people. You have a takeoff button. I should not press it in here. Uh, I gotta be careful. In the standard movement mode, uh, you have to press this button and then the 
like this and and the other thing here is uh, the yaw axis and up and down so you throttle up and throttle down uh, you have an emergency button up there uh, which just cuts the throttle no matter where you are so this will crash you in the water if you press it over water so be careful with the emergency you have this special movements button here which you have to press twice it's a forward and a backward flip it's a left and the right roll I didn't try this yet then you have the recording button which slowly blinks if you press it and now it records 1080p video to the internal memory which is 80 gigabytes I'm gonna stop this a photo button you can take stills and this one I'm not so sure about uh, it's um, the map mode but even if I turn on the mobile data uh, my Android just stays in the wireless and doesn't uh, load data from the map so uh, you can preload it, pre it somehow but I didn't try this yet so we stay in the picture mode uh, down here you see the percent of the battery over here you have the GPS status uh, and this is, the, this is the symbol for the drone in, in the room we have no GPS if you use two fingers you can tilt and pan the cam to a certain degree this is because you have this fish eye and it can move in this large uh, 14 megapixel uh, picture area you can move quite far up like this and move to the sides and of course if you're on the edge of the of the fish eye it gets distorted and, and unsharp a bit so it's it's better to stay in the center maybe you can look down because the whole fish eye is tilted down down a bit um, but it's a nice option then we have the options you can return home it has gps so return to home functionality this is the, the height limiter I spoke about. Uh, if I set it to 23 meters, I'm surely legal. You can choose between Ace, Normal and Joypad modes. I'll come to that later. That's max uh, tilt angle. Of course, this governs the speed you can get. 20 degree is quite an amount and you can get away with this. I read somewhere that it's uh, not recommended to have this very low uh, when you also have winds because uh, you couldn't fight the wind with just 10 degree of nick so the maximum is 30 degree and I stay with the 20 and some picture adjustments where you can adjust the brightness and contrast and you can have different white balance modes maximum ascension speed with two and a half meters so how fast you go up or down this is the turning speed that's also interesting not to have too much turn speed because the the video uh, if you yaw too much doesn't look nice so keep it low then you can decide between uh, howl or rumpf in german which is the protective bumpers you have to set it to outdoor if you fly outside and you can calibrate the roll, uh, nick and your axis we have the Wi-Fi settings you can choose your Wi-Fi name the country and the country makes sure you stay legal within the regulations of uh, power the drone can use uh, so I have Austria here and automatic and then you can choose the Wi-Fi bands <coughs> basically a 2.4 is a heavy used band in cities so this in, in theory or on the field out where you don't have any other Wi-Fi sources 2.4 gigahertz has more range but in, in 
near near cities or near other Wi-Fi devices, 2.4 can be heavily used, and so you have interference and might want to change to 5 gigahertz. So this is really something you have to try out. I put the link in the description where you see the different power settings with different countries and I read that on 2.4 gigahertz and US setting you get 400 milliwatts of digital power which is quite a lot and on 5 gigahertz they even tune up to 4 watts which is incredible incredible power setting I'd say and what's nice uh, you see down here the curves uh, of the used channels of Wi-Fi so in my case I'm using channel 1 here in the house so there's a little bump uh, and for a good setting and if I want to set it manual then I would go to like 6 some something that is not used so it has less interference but I leave it to uh, automatic. Okay, this is some status screen where you see if all motors are okay and some statistics. Uh, I had 26 minutes of flight time already. I had no errors. And some more status infos about the firmware version and the software version 3.1.28 on Android. Yeah, that's about it here. So, yeah, really nice that you can limit the height and the speed and so adjust how it works. Okay, but here in the picture you already see something very interesting, uh, namely the sky controller. So if I want to stay with the Android device, I'm supposed to mount it up here. Clamp it up here. We installed the Galaxy S4 and plugged it in. On the back you have once again these kind of batteries that also fit on the drone. That's nice. So you have uh, the same batteries for the sky controller and for the drone. You get two flight batteries and one for the sky controller. Of course they are interchangeable because they are the same. You connect it back there and then you turn on the sky controller on the side. And this takes some time to boot up. A bit more than your normal uh, flight radio. Because it has basically built in an Android device. Uh, you see the lights are running which uh, show you that it's still in boot mode. And as soon as it did boot, all of them stay at full. If you want to use a sky controller with the Android device, first thing you want to do is uh, connect to the Wi-Fi sky controller and then you go into the free flight app and also make sure you choose the sky controller up here. So it should connect, yeah. And once we're connected, yeah. we can use, for example, the the knob here to change the camera angle. Pressing the knob, camera angle makes a picture. Takes a picture. Now, uh, since we use uh, the sky controller, you don't have something to control here on the display of the uh, mobile phone. Because you have uh, up, down, rudder, roll and pitch here. We have the record, so it would record the video, start and stop. I think you can also start it on the phone, of course. Uh, you still have the emergency button uh, here on the phone, but you also have it here on the sky controller. Now we have 74% in the sky controller and 92% in the drone. Now I see both GPS and both should come green because the sky controller has a GPS built in here and the drone has GPS 
and if both of them are green you're good to go yeah so that's the easiest thing how to control it with sky controller with the smartphone of course the picture on the smartphone is not really large but yeah make sure to disconnect Wi-Fi if you want to use something other because you can only as I understood you can only have one connection uh, either a phone or a, or a tablet to the Herald, you cannot have three friends with their iPads watch your flight by connecting to your drone. That's uh, just one to one connection. The better view you can also use some 7 inch uh, iPad mini or Android tablets, uh, they have an adapter for that that they supply with. And now you get a really nice and huge FPV setup and considering that you get all in one package for 900 euro I say it's it's a pretty complete setup on the iPad we also have to connect to the correct Wi-Fi I could not choose to connect to the Bebop uh, to get to the drone directly or connect to the Sky controller which I do Uh, so connect to the Sky Controller and now uh, starting the free flight app and it should connect to Sky Controller. So we now have the iPad connected to the Parrot and we would start here the free flight mode and once again I can't control uh, tilt or something here because I'm in Sky Controller mode but I can tilt around here. But one thing I'm missing maybe is a uh, uh, center view button. I would love to choose. Uh, I don't think that I will take many photos here. It would really be brilliant if you press this knob and it would go into centered mode. Maybe they can update this with some future development. So I'm able to press record here or here so the iOS app looks a bit different we already have uh, speed, height and distance indicators here uh, again we have the color coded GPS status thing is here drone sky controller both yellow both no GPS lock and the percentages of the batteries uh, the sky controller battery would last for 150 minutes they say uh, and the flight battery will give you around 11 minutes of flight yeah. gotta be careful on this my first flights were in really low temps and I only got 6 to 8 minutes but yeah it was really really cold and it was windy gusty where it had to fight the winds so 10 minutes may be realistic. So you just insert the iPad while it's not on the sky controller. Mount it like this. And then you can slide it in again. And if it's really, really, really bright out there, you can increase the sunshade even more and have a goggle light feeling goggle light like so it's really shaped to fit your your face and it, 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 it attaches here and makes for a nice view so I'm gonna try this out in the sunlight as soon as we again have sunlight here one thing smart they did is they put some some holes with with cloth here so you can move your fingers in and uh, reach the settings for example you have a huge patch antenna up here with this is a directional antenna I'm not sure about the angle and about the decibel gain they will give you maybe I can find this out for you of course you should uh, point this huge antenna 
in the direction you fly. We will see about the range. They tell you that in environments with no interfering Wi-Fi's and using the sky controller in highest power mode, if legal, uh, you can reach two kilometers, which would be really, really high. If you just use the iPad Wi-Fi, you can expect around 300 meters under optimal conditions that are uh, not humid air and optimal orientation of iPad and no other Wi-Fi signals and of course the best uh, Wi-Fi settings set up in the app so if you have it to auto uh, it can choose a, a not optimal setting so make sure you set the right one and I link you uh, an article from Parrot uh, where you can read what are the best settings for Wi-Fi this is the start or land knob which really does uh, automatic takeoff and landing for you it's nice this is the return to home mode and it's really really uh, important that you have uh, the drone at least with uh, green GPS status for this uh, return to home mode to work so keep that in mind get green items before you start on the other side here it's a bit confusing this uh, knob here and the back and home buttons they look very android like they are just uh, used if you don't use a uh, smartphone or tablet if you use an HDMI connected goggle or monitor then you have no touch, touch screen of course and you have to use this joystick and, and this enter button here and you have back and home buttons for the built-in Android device so if you just use uh, smartphones and tablets this joystick and these buttons do nothing for you so I hope this clears things up uh, some test flight footage in very suboptimal settings like high winds and cold temperature it was right above zero degree but it worked quite well and the stabilization effect is really good the image quality is not GoPro-like, of course. You can't expect a miracle out of such a small device. Uh, I would compare the image quality that you get out of the device with an older smartphone that was capable of 1080p, but it was the first generation 1080p. So you don't get GoPro 2 or even GoPro 3 1080p, but it's qu uh, quite decent quality and if you have good sunlight and good lighting conditions you get decent quality. To show you the stabilization effect here in my hangar I really move around the drone like wild. You see this in the status indicator. This thing here shows the, the orientation, the horizontal uh, orientation of the drone. So if I turn it or if the wind blows you you see that the drone is like this in the air but your footage always stays straight one thing you notice if you turn it like wild it gets unsharp radial unsharpness yeah I think that's that's an respectable little tech drone you can even have it upside down and still the video would be nice and straight so <laughs> amazing one other thing you notice here is that you have of course some lag we can actually try to measure the lag you can measure it this way and see how my finger <laughs> gets in the picture and I'd say it's like two or three hundred milliseconds of lag oh and sometimes you see it lags really bad but then again you have a fully stabilized drone and you don't need a real-time video for this okay so I think for the moment that's it and as soon as the weather gets nicer here in spring I hope that I can show you some really nice 
clips out of the bebop so thanks for watching guys i hope you didn't mind this shaky little hand cam style on the end but i really wanted to bring you this video uh, without having to recharge my other camera <laughs>